Thank you for the things you've done for us. It's like precious memories that you left with us. We just want to thank you, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord. And finally, we come this far. I want you all to turn with me to the book of 1st Samuel to the book of 1st Samuel and to shall I leave your hand there in the fourth chapter Marcia, I want you to go to the book of Leviticus Leviticus the 18th chapter of the book of Leviticus God's going to talk in here tonight. The book of Leviticus, the 18th chapter. We were reading on last night, and I want you to really hear me uh, with intense ears tonight. We were talking last night about how the Lord began to raise up a word prophetically about how the children of Israel got ready to move the ark and God commanded Moses, for those of you who weren't here last night, I just hit it briefly, but I didn't stay there. But I got to walk through this tonight. He commanded Moses to choose seven priests and to have those priests to march before the Ark of the Covenant if they were going to ever use it. Now watch this. The Ark of the Covenant is a power source of God in the Old Testament, it was the thing that God chose to show forth his divine presence in the midst of a people. Now stay with me. Stay with me because I got to break this down like this tonight. God said to me, I got to walk through this thing like this tonight. It represents a presence of the Lord. Now, this is what I began to notice. When God said... For the seven men to get seven ram's horns and they were to blow the ram's horns before they were supposed to move the ark. Because the ram's horn was a representation of consecration. Which says, if you try to move the ark and there is no consecration, then the ark turns from being your help to your enemy God I feel the Holy Ghost right there I said I feel the Holy Ghost right there and so a lot of the chaos Myron that we're seeing happen in the body of Christ to many churches and when I say chaos a lot of stuff that the greatest chaos to me is not to hear about a, a pastor who's fallen and whose flock is scattered. The worst chaos right now that is in the body of Christ is the kind of chaos where it looks like it's all together. But all behind the scenes is sin and degradation and mess. See, the worst kind of church is a church that have all of the right chandeliers and, and all of the right camera work and, and all of the right choir robes and all of that. But there is no power of deliverance in that church. Now, I'm not going to get a whole lot of amens right there because people don't like to deal with deliverance because deliverance means that I must confront the enemies in my spirit. I must become honest with God. And if I come honest with God, then there's going to be a manifestation of the things that are in my life that doesn't please God, which means my mask has to come off. Oh, Jesus. And so too many of us are getting worse in the church instead of getting better. We go to church more than we ever have, but we're worse off than we've ever been. Because you know why? We're trying to handle the word of God with no consecration. I'm not getting nobody to help me tonight, but it's okay. I got to walk through this. We're singing Zion songs. With no ram's horn. No, I'm not getting nobody to say amen right there. We're, 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 we're dancing and shouting with no ram's horn. And we don't think that that is important. But the book of Leviticus, the 18th chapter and the 23rd verse, what does he say, Tashana? What does he say? 
Neither shall you lie with any beast uh -huh. and defile yourself with it. Uh -huh. Neither shall any woman yield herself mm -hmm. to a beast to lie with it. Uh -huh. It is confusion, mm -hmm. perversion, yes. and degradingly carnal. Uh -huh. Read it. Do not defile yourselves uh -huh. in any one of these ways. Yes. For in all these things, the nations are defiled, which I am casting out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore, I visit the iniquity of it upon it. And the land itself vomits out her inhabitants. Now, now, now watch this. Now, now, now here God is giving fair warning. And he, and he, watch this. And he's letting the people know. Now, what's about to happen in your life? What's about to come into this camp where the children of Israel, I'm about to anoint some priests. I'm about to take Aaron and his sons. I'm about to consecrate them with the ram's horn. I'm about to bring about a change. Now, understand something. You've been crying for my presence. But I want to warn you about something. Once you embrace my presence, there is no going back. Okay, I'm going to say this one more time. And I'm saying this as a prophecy in this church. Once we have, now I know last night we said that it was awesome in here. And the presence of God was in this place. And even tonight, you can feel the anointing hovering. But what the Lord began to say to me on the way the church is, we cannot go back. See, this is not just a hot service where we jump and shout and we cry and we write a new song. No, something prophetic has happened in this atmosphere. Atmosphere. We have embraced a side of God that is not always available to the common church. And you cannot go back. You don't hear what I'm saying? You cannot touch this glory and then decide to go back to doing church as usual. I don't know if you got what I just said. See, because, because what? What's different about this? What's different about this service and this weekend that is the fact that God have not sent an evangelist. He has sent a prophet to blow the trumpet of the ram's horn. Now watch this. See, the ram's horn represents many things. But the first thing that God showed me about the ram's horn is that one of its representations is that when it is blown, it calls a people to attention. Oh, Jesus. When the ram's horn, now watch this, this is going to get you. It is not to be blown to any people. In the Old Testament, it said that it was blown for the male Jewish men. But when the women found out that there was going to be a blowing of the trumpet, they came too. You don't hear me. And it was so important to God that the men of God heard the call to consecration. That the book said to me today that if somebody was missing out of the congregation the day that they blew the horn, they were supposed to inquire that somebody come to their house and personally blow the trumpet. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. And so now we got a crippled church because you got women that are hearing the horn and the men are sitting somewhere looking all cool and upright. You don't get what I'm saying. And we're going in breach first. Come on, y'all. He said the women are not supposed to be the first partakers of this end time revival. The trumpet of consecration is to be blown for the men first. I'm not getting nobody to say amen right there. I'm not getting nobody to say amen right there. And that's the reason why women were praying in the home. But you don't see happening what's supposed to happen. Because there's a certain authority that God puts on the men. There's a certain trumpet that blows, that causes a man to stand upright. And when he does that, he takes authority over everything that's in the atmosphere of his house. And it is the man that pronounces to the house that we are consecrated unto the Lord. We're set aside for the master's use. I'll sit down, I'm not gonna go. I'm trying to I'm trying to take my time and do this right. And that's why he said.